Hello everyone. In our previous lecture, we have discussed about some basic concepts of probability in machine learning. Now, let us see about total probability, Bayes rule and conditional independence. The theorem of total probability is useful to find the probability of happening of an event from the different partitions of the sample space. Given that we have events from E1 to En, which is part of the sample space S, we can express it as E1 union E2 union up to En is equal to S. Here, the events are mutually exclusive events. That is, there is no dependency between two events. Let us consider an event A, which is part of the sample space S, as mentioned in this diagram. This can be expressed as A is equal to A intersection S. This S can be written as E1 union E2 union up to En according to this equation. By expanding this equation, we can write it as A intersection E1 union A intersection E2 up to A intersection En. Let us apply the probability on both sides of the equation. We get P of A is equal to P of A intersection E1 plus P of A intersection E2 up to P of A intersection En. According to product rule, we can express P of A intersection E1 as P of E1 into P of A given E1. So, we can write P of A intersection E1 as P of E1 into P of A given E1. Likewise, we can replace each individual probability up to P of A intersection En. Thus, we can express the total probability as P of A is equal to summation of P of Ek into P of A given Ek, where K is equal to 1 to N. So, this is the theorem of total probability. Now, let us see about Bayes rule. Combining the definition of conditional probability with the product and sum rule yields the Bayes rule, also called as Bayes theorem. This can be expressed as P of A given B is equal to P of B given A into P of A divided by P of B, where P of A and P of B are the probability of events A and B, and P of B is never equal to 0. P of A given B is the probability of event A when event B happens. P of B given A is the probability of event B when A happens. Bayes theorem for n set of events can be expressed as P of EI given A is equal to P of EI into P of A given EI divided by summation of P of EK into P of A given EK. Let us derive this equation. We can write P of EI given A as P of EI intersection A divided by P of A. Likewise, we can express P of A given EI as P of EI intersection A divided by P of EI. Then, by using the multiplication rule of probability in equation 2, we can get P of EI intersection A is equal to P of EI into P of A given EI. Now, by total probability theorem, we can express P of A as summation of P of EK into P of A given EK. Substituting the values of P of EI intersection A and P of A from equations 3 and 4 into equation 1, we get P of EI given A is equal to P of EI into P of A given EI divided by summation of P of EK into P of A given EK, which is the Bayes theorem equation. Now, let us see an example for Bayes rule. A man is known to speak the truth two out of three times. He throws a die and reports that the number obtained is a 4. Find the probability that the number obtained is actually a 4. Let us apply Bayes rule for this. Let A be the event that the man reports that the number 4 is obtained. E1 be the event that 4 is obtained and E2 be its complementary event. Then P of E1 is equal to probability that 4 occurs. So, denominator is total number of outcomes. In a dice, we have 6 possible outcomes and numerator is the possibility of occurrence of 4. It is 1. P of E2 is equal to probability that 4 does not occur. So, it is written as 1 minus P of E1. That is 1 minus 1 by 6 is equal to 5 by 6. P of A given E1 is equal to probability that man reports 4 and it is actually a 4. So, totally he speaks 3 times, that is denominator is 3. Out of 3 times, he speaks truth for 2 times, so it is 2 by 3. 
P of A given E2 is equal to probability that the man reports 4 and it is not a 4. So, total number of times he speaks is 3. He speaks one time live that is 1. By using Bayes theorem, the probability for P of E1 given A can be expressed as P of E1 into P of A given E1 divided by P of E1 into P of A given E1 plus P of E2 into P of A given E2. Let us substitute these values into this equation. P of E1 is 1 by 6. A given E1 is 2 by 3. And E1 is 1 by 6. A given E1 is 2 by 3. E2 is 5 by 6. A given E2 is 1 by 3. So, when we evaluate, we get 2 by 7. Thus, the probability that the number 4 is obtained is 2 by 7. Now, let us see about conditional independence. Two random variables x and y are said to be independent given z if and only if p of x comma y given z can be expressed as p of x given z into p of y given z. Let us see some examples for independence and conditional independence. So first we will see the example for independence and conditional independence. We have three events x, y and z. x is throwing a dice, y is tossing a coin and z is getting a card from a deck. Here, if x and y is independent, we can express it as p of x comma y is equal to p of x into p of y. Throwing a dice and tossing a coin is not dependent of each other, so we can express it as p of x into p of y. The conditional independence can be expressed as p of x given z, p of y given z and p of x comma y given z. So, if x and y are not dependent on z, then we can represent it as p of x given z as p of x, p of y given z as p of y and p of x comma y given z as p of x comma y. Let us see the example for not independent but conditionally independent. We have three events x, y and z. x is height, y is vocabulary and z is age. Here x and y are not independent because height might determine the vocabulary. If he is a child, uh, the height might be uh, short and it determines the vocabulary because the vocabulary might be poor. But given age, it is conditionally independent. So, when age is given, even though the person is short, the vocabulary does not matter. Now, let us see about independent but not conditionally independent. So, we have dice throw as event x, dice throw 2 as event y and sum of dice as uh, z. If we find x and since already z is given, it is easy to predict y. So, therefore, x and y are independent but not conditionally independent. Given z, it is not independent. So, thus we have seen about conditional independence here. So, in this lecture, we have discussed about total probability, base rule and conditional independence. Thank you.